Thank you, Chair Wildridge. And good morning. As crews have been able to better and safely access the fire damaged areas, additional site assessments have been conducted. As we anticipated, additional properties with significant to full loss have been identified. And the number of identified properties has increased from 181 to 189. Supporting the impacted residents is our priority. Only those residents in the following areas of West Kelowna and the Regional District of the Central Okanagan Electoral Area West, still on evacu evacuation order, are asked to visit courtemergency.ca slash property info and recheck for property status updates. To be clear, this is West Kelowna Estates, properties with access from Bear Creek, Maine, and neighborhoods along West Side Road. The residents in these areas can visit the online property information tool and recheck their property status updates. We need you to do this so we can collect your contact information. Concurrently, we will begin today to contact residents with more detailed information and next steps. These are for those that have suffered significant to full loss. These calls will continue over the next few days. No changes have been recorded in Kelowna, Lake Country, or West Bank First Nation. If you are in those areas, please do not use the tool. The updated breakdown properties with significant damage to full structure loss is now as follows. Lake Country 3, Kelowna 4, West Bank First, First Nation 19, West Kelowna 69, and the Regional District of Central Okanagan West Electoral Area 94. This number includes Lake Okanagan Resort as a single property. On this property at Lake Okanagan Resort, we have approximately 150 units that have been impacted. Lake Okanagan Resort property owners are encouraged to go on to courtemergency.ca. There are special instructions posted there to help them navigate the search tool so they can identify their property. Those who use the property notification tool again on courtemergency.ca will be prompted to fill in a contact information form. As I shared, individual calls to impacted property owners will commence today and will continue over the next few days. We will be providing additional information to the property owners and providing a clear line of sight on next steps. Only when it is safe to do so, officials will conduct escorted visits to those owners that have had significant to full structural loss of property in these affected areas. As we transition from response to recovery for the McDougall Creek wildfire, we are in the process of opening a resiliency center. We hope to have that open later this week it is on WFN lands where affected residents will be able to seek supports, answers, and we will also be located near the emergency support services as they are too relocating. This location has been deemed as a convenient and appropriate location given the West Kelowna, West Bank First Nation, and Regional District Electoral Area West residents. I'd like to thank all those who did go on the tool and complete the information form. Because you have done so, you have expedited our ability to be accurate and to reach out. As, we're, as we know, waiting for the status of your property has been very stressful. 
And it was really important that we shared what we knew when we knew it. We knew this would probably be a two-step process and we were right. Please know that everyone involved, including the wonderful people I've had the privilege of working at the EOC, they're working as hard as they can to get you as much information, get you home as quickly as possible. And if going home isn't an option, then making sure you have the right supports. In closing, I will just say, I have been in the EOC every day since this started. I've lost track of the number of happy birthdays we've sang for 30 seconds and then quickly got back to work. I've lost track of the number of people in that room whose adult children are getting ready to go away to university. And everyone thought they had two more weeks together before that major change. And I know that it's the same out there. Please know we're working hard and we're keeping all of you top of mind. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. If we could please have Brad Litke, BC Wildfire Service Incident Command, tap to the mic. Good morning. Thanks for the opportunity to be here again. I'm happy to report there's been continued and further progress within the complex. Um, on the ground today, we have a total of wildland firefighters of 203, structural firefighters 21 and operational field staff 31, bringing to a total of 255 personnel. Aircraft assigned to the complex is 12, and total pieces of heavy equipment is 30. There were further uh, reductions in evacuation orders yesterday, which I'll, I'll let the fire chief speak to, and uh, further recommendations given this morning. Our priority continues to be responder for responder safety getting the, the people of the Central Okanagan home and the integration of re-entry and recovery teams into the incident. Yesterday, uh, fire operations were disrupted by a drone in the fire area. Conservation officers with the BC Ministry of Environment were able to identify the operator and seize the drone. This is a reminder that these drones create a significant hazard uh, to our aerial operations and our pilots and crews. Yesterday, the McDougal Creek fire challenged some of the fire guard in the uh, uh, Hidden Creek area. Planned ignitions in that area were not performed. That was the fire. For a weather forecast today, we're expecting um, temperatures to reach highs of 30 degrees Celsius with relative humidity values dropping into the high teens today, as low as 18%. Mainly sunny skies with local smoke and uh, northerly upslope winds should remain light with occasional gusts of eight to 12 kilometers an hour, gusting to 20. Planned ignitions are being conducted in sections to ensure lower intensity fire behavior um, is used to minimize tree mortality of the working forest and the recreational forest. Based on the warming and drying trends, fire activity and fire behavior uh, has been increasing throughout the, the afternoons. Specifically to the McDougal Creek wildfire, uh, current size has been tracked at 12,635 hectares. Uh, it's still classed as out of control. Along with the incident management team, we have 158 firefighters, 12 operational field staff, BC hydro technicians, and RCMP working throughout the day. Planned ignition work continues today. It's these ignition work, which has allowed us to um, recommend that orders be rescinded to alerts by securing control lines with fire to the, to the guard. Some of the planned ignitions will be located adjacent to West Kelowna, and if the site and weather conditions are favorable, crews and aerial resources will be conducting ignition operations along the west flank of the perimeter, continuing to secure our containment lines. Yesterday, crews successfully completed approximately 100 hectare planned ignition along the southwest corner of this of McDougal Creek, 
building off the previous day's ignition operations above Smith Creek, working north towards Powers Creek drainage. Today, crews will continue mopping up along the guard now that the perimeter has been brought down uh, to a safer, more workable terrain. Along the south perimeter, crews will continue to patrol for hot spots, demobing gear, and repositioning it to different parts of the fire, removing structural protection equipment that is no longer required. Along the north end of the fire, crews will be mopping up the perimeter in the bald range area where they used hand ignitions yesterday to tie the fire perimeter to a rock face, uh, which is a natural containment feature. The 1300 hectare planned ignition yesterday was postponed due to site and weather conditions. And today, if permitted, crews will be conducting ignitions for approximately 500 of the total 1300 uh, hectares along the west flank. A combination of aerial and hand ignition tactics will be used to remove unburnt fuel, the pre previously established by machine guard heavy equipment, and the free burning's edge. Ignition operations will be supported by ground crews, heavy equipment, aerial resources, working from previously established machine guards along the fire perimeter. The purpose of these planned ignitions is to remove unburnt fuel in an intentional way to secure this, these control lines. Based on current conditions, this unburnt fuel has the potential to burn on its own and in a significant and more active way. Crews will continue to mop up hot spots 100 feet inside the fire perimeter behind structures on West Kelowna, Petman Road, and West Lake Road. Moving over to Walroy, uh, no growth there. Fire status continues to remain in being held status, and there's only alerts in place there. To the Clark Creek wildfire in Lake Country, no change in size, 360 hectares, and the status continues to be being held. Any resources that we've uh, downsized in have been reallocated over to the McDougal Creek wildfire. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank the communities of the Central Okanagan. Uh, we heard you and you motivate us with your, uh, your kind words and your support. I can confidently say you're being served by outstanding responders, the fire departments, RCMP, the EOC, ESS, and the various utilities. It's been a privilege to serve alongside them and you're in good hands. BC Wildfire Service will continue to be here shoulder to shoulder with your responders until the threat has left your community. Thank you for this opportunity to be included with these press conferences. Thank you very much, Brad. If we could please have Jason Broland, West Kelowna Fire Chief, to the mic. Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, operational period number 24 for our fire department. So I'll be speaking to West Kelowna and West Bank First Nation. Uh, structural Fire Department response. Uh, today, as you've heard, uh, is a day of continued transition. The hard work of structural firefighters uh, now becomes the hard work of recovery. Um, the firefight in our community has transitioned to a firefight in the hills above our community. Uh, residents who have been out of their home are now returning uh, slowly but surely to their homes. Uh, I said very early on in the fire uh, that the minute people go out, we start thinking about how to get them back. I said that we have a plan and we were going to execute on it, and we've continued to do that. As you heard uh, yesterday, thousands of people uh, returned uh, to their homes, and today I'm hopeful uh, that even more will do so. There is still a lot of fire behind our community. Um, we flew uh, over uh, quite a portion of it yesterday uh, and were able to see that this fire will be with us for a while, not in the streets and neighborhoods, but in the hills above. Um, as you heard from Brad, uh, the hard work continues uh, behind the community. It's not yet 100% safe uh, in those areas, but great progress is being made. The fire, as many people witnessed yesterday and will likely see again today, is still close. But on the structural firefighting side, we've made tremendous progress. 
the many fire departments who have visited us here and helped out from out of town have now redeployed back to their communities or other um, fires. Um, my firefighters said to me, Chief, we will be the last ones on the line. And I can tell you that we were. Uh, our fire department um, was the last department off the line when it came to structural firefighting in our community. And we now are conducting uh, just patrols, particularly in neighborhoods that are returning uh, or remain on evacuation uh, order. A tough week is just beginning for many um, who are returning home or waiting to return home. Uh, when the going got tough, your firefighters were on the ground fighting it. And now for many, uh, the going is going to get tough and we ask you to take a page from our book and do the same. I'm asking, uh, being asked over and over again, when can we go home? And it's a very fair question, but the answer is simple. You'll be allowed to go home as soon as it's safe. Um, I want to speak specifically to a couple neighborhoods. Firstly, the Smith Creek uh, area. You heard from uh, Brad that a number of ignitions are either ongoing or planned in this area. And that is going to secure the line between your neighborhood and the fire itself. As soon as that works complete and as soon as fire behavior allows, I expect uh, that residents will be able to go back home in that neighborhood. This will be soon. There's a lot of resources being put to this, both on the fire line as well as in the EOC. I want to speak specifically to the other neighborhood in our community, which is still out, but for a very different reason. Uh, the West Kelowna Estates and West Side Road neighborhoods. Uh, the damage in the remaining evacuation order area is significant. You or your neighbors, uh, in many cases, have lost their homes and lost everything. We're going to do it right and we're going to do it safe. You heard from the EOC director that a number of things are being put in place uh, to assure that. In that neighborhood, entire systems are having to be removed and rebuilt. The power lines, um, the power poles have burned, the lines are on the ground, the transformers are tipped over. All of that is being removed and it's being rebuilt. Um, there are danger trees, which mean in any sort of windstorm, those trees could tip over um, and, and we don't want people in the vicinity of them. There's an entire uh, group of people who are out there addressing those. Some of you, your homes are undamaged, but the roads leading to them are not safe. So until those roads can be made safe, we can't get you back in to see your house. The return is going to be staged. It's going to be incre incremental, as we said, and it's going to be in some cases, a lot by lot re-entry. There are great staff at the EOC who are already working on that plan. Um, we have compassion and sympathy for your loss and we understand what you're going through, but we're making progress. And some of that progress I can share is that this morning, um, last night and this morning, uh, Brad and I signed off on the lifting of the evacuation order for Rose Valley Elementary School. The school was saved through the hard work of firefighters from BC Wildfire and the fire departments uh, who were there. And this, because of that, this morning, the teachers were able to get back into the school and begin to set up their classrooms for the resumption uh, of business there. That's a major milestone for the community. Um, but in the neighborhoods nearby, in many cases, it will be days or in some even weeks before people are able to return uh, to the most devastated uh, spots. I've asked that um, the EOC uh, begin to work on sharing some of those longer timelines to give people a better sense of what they're looking at. The best thing I can advise for those of you who are still on evacuation order or alert is that you sign up at courtemergency.ca. That's where you're going to find out immediately when those evacuation orders and alerts are lifted. So this is our, our final 10 a.m. media conference, and people are probably asking, what does the future hold? Uh, there is an ongoing firefight. Um, we've heard a lot about planned ignitions. People are going to see smoke and fire, sometimes in what looks like very concerning amounts over the community. But there are a lot of professionals on the ground uh, ready to deal with this. 
our primary focus remains getting you home. Uh, it's been my honor and pleasure to come to all of you uh, each morning. All right, uh, so we've been bringing you this press conference going on right now in Kelowna, the interior of British Columbia. It has been ground zero to really an unprecedented series of wildfires that the province has seen in recent weeks. This will be the last of these uh, press conferences they held, ho will hold. They've held them pretty much daily ever since the crisis began. We can tell you close to 200 different properties have been significantly damaged. Uh, more than 2,300 properties are currently under evacuation orders right now. A lot of people have been allowed to go back home in recent days, but there are still a lot of people who are waiting to get the all clear.